What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's recipe, we are making the most epic but simple classic tear and share. If you like the recipe, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any more of my baking videos. Now, let's get into the recipe. For our fabulous tear and share loaf, you will need 400 grams of strong bread flour, seven grams of salt, 325 milliliters of lukewarm water, 50 grams of melted unsalted butter, and a packet of fast action dry yeast. I kid you not, this is the extent of our ingredients. This is why we love bread making. First thing we're gonna do is dump all of our dry ingredients, being our flour and our salt, into a mixing bowl. Give everything a good whisk around to make sure it's nice and combined, and then add in your fast action dry yeast. Again, giving that a whisk to make sure it's nicely incorporated. I'm going to go in with my 325 milliliters of lukewarm water. I'm also going to go in with my melted butter. Using the back of a butter knife, I'm going to bring everything together into a nice rough and shaggy dough. It does not have to be perfect at this stage. We just want to start bringing the ingredients together. Once you have formed that shaggy ball of dough, flour up your hands and turn out the dough onto a floured work surface. Now it is time to knead. Kneading is a very individual thing. The more you do this, the more you will find your own technique. So don't be afraid to play around with a couple of different methods to find what suits you. With a dough like this, because it is more on the sticky side, I like to use the assistance of a bench scraper. Don't be put off by how sticky this dough can be. The more you work it and the more you develop that gluten, the less sticky it becomes over time. I will usually spend time kneading between five and 10 minutes. So if you don't have time to do this by hand, feel free to use the dough hook on your stand mixer. And a good way to check that your dough is properly kneaded and the gluten has developed is to do the window pane test. So you can see here, I'm taking my dough and I'm stretching it out. And what I'd like to see is my fingers through the dough if I held it up to the light. So you can see here that the dough is actually tearing. So I know that it is not yet ready and I'm going to knead it for a little bit longer. Three to four minutes later, you'll see it has completely changed and hopefully the lighting is clear enough that you can see that my fingers are almost visible through that web of gluten that has developed. So this is perfect. I'm going to bring it into a ball and I'm going to pop it into a lightly oiled bowl to rise until doubled in size. Depending on the temperature of your home, this could take between one and a half to two hours. So two hours later, you can see that my dough has doubled in size and it is perfect and ready for shaping. Trying to keep some air in there, I'm not actually going to knock the dough back at this stage. I'm going to lightly flour the ball of dough again and using my bench scraper, I'm cutting the dough into 12 equal sized balls. A really easy way to make sure that you're being accurate with this is to use an electric kitchen scales. My individual dough balls weighed between 65 and 70 grams. So there is a bit of a technique in creating your dough balls. I put my hand into a claw shape and I work the dough in circular motions between the heel of my hand and the tips of my fingers. My description here probably isn't the best, so I hope that this visual is helpful. And you wanna repeat the same steps with all 12 of your dough balls. And we're going to actually add this to a nine inch cake pan. I find this is a really useful tool for proving dough. Make sure it's nicely greased and I'm going to add in the dough balls, leaving a small bit of space in between and trying to be as even as possible. After 40 minutes is up, you can see that they have again pillowed up and doubled in size, which is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Glaze the top with a little bit of egg wash or some milk, which is what I'm using here. We are then going to bake in a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius in a fan oven for about 20 minutes until the top is turning a nice golden brown. Oh, just look how good these look. Perfect individual dinner rolls. And what I love about this is that it is completely customizable. So you can brush this with garlic, you can stuff it with mozzarella. The choices are endless. Once removed from the oven, allow it to cool on a wire rack but I promise you, and I know I say this with all of my bakes, it is not going to last. This bread is best eaten warm, fresh out of the oven. It does not get any better than this. The smell is irresistible. It's absolutely perfect for a gathering where you have a lot of people and you want to impress with a really simple and straightforward bake. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. And I cannot wait to see you back on my channel really soon. Bye.